It's now my great pleasure to introduce to you this year's student speaker, Hannah Cardin, to speak on behalf of the class of 2013. Hannah is completing a Master's in Divinity. During her time at Harvard Divinity School, she's been an active member of the community, including this year when she took the position of Coordinator for Finance of Life Together, our student association. She was also part of the Noon Service Steering Committee, the Anti-Oppression Coalition, the Pocket Pancakes Improv Team, and the Methodist Covenant Group. She received her undergraduate degree in economics from the University of Chicago, and previously worked as an outreach, education, and training associate at the Interfaith Youth Corps. Starting this summer, Hannah will be pastor of Elston Avenue United Methodist Church in Chicago, Illinois. Please welcome our student speaker, Hannah Cardin. Good afternoon. Class of 2013, are you excited to graduate today? Yeah. Class of 2013, I'd like to hear again, are you excited to graduate today? Yeah. Yes. All right, I just needed a little bit of that before I speak. Because this is Harvard, and because I know from personal experience that this graduating class is an extraordinary community of people, I must say that as I stand before you, I am looking forward to your successes. I am looking forward to seeing all of the things that you will offer to the world. Academics, I look forward to your groundbreaking articles, to the books which will be fought over and torn up by your colleagues, to the new generation of scholars you're going to mentor and teach. Every one of you, if our education is any indication, are going to be unpacking things and problematizing things and queering things and just going ahead and decentering the whole universe wherever you may go. <laughs> Nonprofit leaders, I look forward to your innovative interventions into social issues, to the care and hospitality and education you're going to give to those around you, to the ways you're going to change the funding and governance of 501c3s forever. Activists, I look forward to the laws you will force through, the protections for the marginalized you will fight for, the oppressions you will uncover, and the new relationships between people that you will forge. Religious leaders, I look forward to the new, brand new forms of community you will experiment with, the testimony you will offer of your convictions, the education you will do for the world about your tradition and what it has been and what it might be. Artists, I look forward to the music, to the plays, to the images you will create to delight and challenge those who experience them. Parents, partners, and friends, I look forward to the ways the world will increase in love from the support that you offer to one another and to others. No matter what you do, I know that all of you are going to be amazing. But I have to admit that because this is not just Harvard, but the Harvard Divinity School, and because I do know you and have seen what you can do over the last few years, there's something I look forward to even more than your successes. Far more than your successes, actually. And that is your failures. I look forward most to your epic and glorious failures. I look forward to the new yoga classes and pub churches that no one ever comes to. I look forward to the articles you write that you later have to walk back from because you realize the criticisms of them had merit. I look forward to the tiny startups that run out of money, the campaigns that sputter out, the art you can't stand to look at a year later. I look forward to your painful embarrassments, which I am absolutely sure will accompany my own. As counterintuitive as it may seem, these are the things I look forward to the most because they are the things that are going to be the true sign of the worth of our education. 
It is only through risking failure that we plumb the depths of creativity. It is only through risking failure that we can ever hope to move outside the boundaries of convention and corrupted system. It is only through risking failure that we truly love, truly become open to the world, truly learn. And if you're risking failure often enough, you're gonna find it. <laughs> to do anything truly good, we have to be foolish and crazy and get it wrong half the time and not get credit for it half the time we get it right. If we don't see these failures happening in the future, we won't be doing all that we can do. There's a reason that I know that every person in this class is capable of that level of public risk and failure. It's because you came here. I'm not saying that Harvard Divinity School is the land of failure, necessarily. <laughs> but to come here, every one of you certainly did have to embrace your inner fool. I know, and I know you know, because I see you posting the evidence on Facebook every day, that our discipline is neither the most well-known, well-understood, or most remunerative of all the paths we could have chosen. Religion tops all the lists of majors that can't find jobs. Religious professionals are faced with more skepticism than admiration. And scholars of religion, as this faculty knows, are more likely to have their scholarship twisted or ignored in the media than faithfully reported and explored. My first year here, uh, my first week, I think, I was at a party with Harvard Law and Kennedy School students, and one of them asked me what brought me to Cambridge. I said that I went to Harvard Divinity School, and he asked me what that was. <laughs> it gets better. Um, I said, oh, well, for me, I'm going to get a professional degree to become a minister, a pastor, um, and most people at the school will either be scholars of religion, or they'll teach it, or they just believe that it'll be relevant to their work in life. He looked at me quizzically and said, and Harvard teaches that? Isn't that illegal? <laughs> Putting aside the grave concerns this gave me for our legal education here at Harvard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's actually a fairly decent indicator of how many of my friends reacted my decision to come here to pursue this kind of life, this particular flavor of graduate education. I'm guessing that for many of you, while they have been essential and they are here and they are the reason why we, we are here, um, our parents and partners and friends did not necessarily throw a wild party when they heard you were getting a master's in theological studies. Yes? It's not something that's always easy to get. And this may be even more true or as true for those of you who didn't come here planning to be a scholar of religion. Those of us who came here to find ourselves, or because faith or a deep instinct demanded it and we didn't know why and still may not. Because you are following a call to ministry that your tradition will not recognize because of your gender or sexuality or identity. Here we practice religions that no one has ever heard of. We study places that people can't find on a map. Many of us have changed our mind a thousand times about why we came here and what this degree means and is going to mean in our lives. Some of you sitting in front of me right now might not yet know. Coming here was not the choice that made sense. But I hope that for you, as for me, your time here has given you something much, much better than sense. We have been a part of the greatest kind of foolishness. You did come here for a reason, for love or for insatiable curiosity or a wandering, meandering kind of hope that it was gonna help you figure things out. And you didn't let all the very good, rational reasons for not coming stop you from doing it. That kind of foolishness is a strength that nothing can match. By coming here, you have demonstrated that you are a people who already know how to take chances, 
how to experiment, how to go against the grain and value something that others may have difficulty seeing the value of. Whether or not you got what you expected out of this place, having taken the chance sets you on the path to the best kind of greatness, foolish greatness. This, my friends, is why our failures will be so epic and so glorious, because they will be the evidence that we have kept our inner fool alive, that we have continued to follow our passions for justice or curiosity or God without letting worries about success contain us, that we are willing to risk failure to keep going to find what is right and what is good, to learn more and learn better without letting our egos and need to be right get in the way. Keep trying, class of 2013. Keep risking, keep failing. The mark of our education here will be our failures. And I look forward to every one of them. Thank you.